Hey everyone, we've been talking about lists, and you can think of a list as like a sequence of data. And then based on the sequence, you can slice out different data, or you can, um, you know, you can access those data, like the items. Um, and in, in much of the same regard, you can al almost think of like a, a string as being a sequence of data. But in the strings case, it's a sequence of characters. Um, so lists and strings actually they have a lot in common where we can use some of the same operations like slicing which I'm going to show you here but there are important differences as well the string is what we call immutable and the list is mutable and we need to understand the difference in those two things immutable and mutable and uh, that's what we're going to talk about here in this video so let's uh, let's check it out and I just want to write this down in notes because uh, this is the you know this is the important part of this video. We're going to say um, mutable, right? Mutable is a a uh, a list, and immutable is a string, and also something called the tuple, which uh, we'll talk in, in, a, in maybe in the next video about the tuple. But for right now, we're going to see the differences between list and string and also some of the similarities. So regarding those similarities, and uh, I just want to point those out first. Let's say we had a uh, string called cat name, okay? And our cat name is Roxy. Now, what I was saying at the intro was that um, we can think of Roxy as being a sequence of characters. And if we can think of it like that, then we can use a lot of the same notation or the syntax that we use for lists. Like, like even though cat, cat name is a string, I can still uh, use index notation here and say uh, cat name zero. Cat name zero is the capital R because capital R is the zeroth index. Or I could say like cat name negative one, that's going to give me the Y because uh, that's the last uh, character in the sequence. Or I could say, uh, you know, I could slice this thing even. I could say one to three, right? Cat name one to three, that slices out the, zero, the O, not the zero, and the X because uh, the O is at index one. X is at index 2, and remember this is up to but not including index 3. So that gives me the O and the X. And I can also use the in and the not in with this too. So like I can say um, capital R oops, in cat name. And it returns true because there is a capital R in cat name. You know, I can try like is, is lowercase x in there? Yes. Is uppercase x in there? No, that's false. And it can actually get a little bit more complex than that. This is really nice, really handy. I can ask it, like, is capital R O in cat name? And it returns true. And I can ask also, like, is not in, right? Is capital R O, o not in cat name? And that returns false because capital R O is in cat name. And so because the word in works with strings, uh, just like it did with lists, we can also loop through using a for loop um, each character in the string. So I want to show you that right now. Let's say we have uh, so we have this cat name, and I'm going to say for i in cat name colon. And so what this is going to do is it's going to set i equal to capital R, then set i equal to O and then I equal to X and I equal to Y and uh, just in this little simple simple demonstration I'm just going to print some asterisks and then followed by uh, we're going to concatenate that with the ith character and then um, maybe some more asterisks and you see what it prints out here the asterisks with capital R then with O then with X and then with Y. So that's pretty cool, right? So we can loop through each character in a string, just like we could loop through each item in a list. So hopefully you're on board with me when I say that, uh, that uh, lists and strings have a lot of similarities between the two of them. They're both sequential. Now I want to point out the differences between the two. And, um, and I'm just going to start by clearing everything. Let's reset. Okay. 
And uh, again, I want to point this out to you that a list is mutable. That means it can be changed. And so I just want to remind you, let's, let's say we had a list. Uh, we'll say name as list. And we'll say um, Roxy is the first item. And the second item is a. Uh, and the third item is cat. Okay, so my, my name as list is Roxy a cat. Now, if I wanted to uh, instead have it say Roxy the cat, then I could just do something like this, name as list, and I could access the uh, firsteth item in the list, right? Uh, that is the item at element or um, index one, right, which is the A, and instead I can overwrite that. That is, I can uh, change it to the, right? And so now if I look at name as list, now it's Roxy the cat. And so lists can be changed as you just have seen here. And uh, we can use, you know, the, the del keyword. We can append, we can insert, we can remove. We can do all these things to the list because a list is mutable. Now let me show you this same kind of uh, situation, but using a string. So I'm going to clear this, and we'll just say name as string, and then uh, I'm going to define a string that says Roxy a cat. Now, the uh, so now I have this name as string in there, Roxy a cat, and if I want to change the a to a the, you might think, well, let's first locate the A. So that's at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's just make sure that that's true. Name as string 5 is the A. So you might want to try this. Name as string, we're going to set that 5 equal to the, right? We want to change a to the. And we can't do it. We get a type error. What we're trying to do does not work with string does not support this. And so uh, we cannot do that. And that's because the string is immutable. It cannot be changed. Any any um, any uh, variable of type string cannot be changed. So the only option we have then is to slice out Roxy and slice out cat and create a new variable with the instead of a. So for example, a new new name okay I will slice out Roxy so that will be um, I'm gonna give myself some more space here just give me a second okay name as string and um, Roxy is at index 0 1 2 3 and I'm also gonna get the space 4 so I want 0 to 5 since the the last index is not included. So name as string will give me Roxy and the first space. And then instead of a, uh, I'm going to concatenate that with the word the. And then I'm going to pull out the space and then cat. So the space, uh, let's see, we said 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The space starts at 6. So name as string 6. And then uh, we're going to go to um, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten, because it's up to but not including. So if I hit enter here, now we've got a new name, right? And there it is, Roxy the cat. So th this was kind of the roundabout way of doing this, but it's the only way of replacing the A with the the. We cannot directly replace A with the. We have to create a new variable a new variable here called new name and then we have to slice out the words that we want and then we have to replace the words that we don't want and that is because a string is immutable a string is immutable and uh, in the next video we're going to start to look at another different uh, type of variable called the tuple and a tuple is also immutable so I will see you then thank you